Hey there, Prosperity Practitioner. This is Brandon Hanley, and I am here today to talk to you a little bit about a book known as Working with the Law by Raymond Hollywell. This book came to my attention by way of Bob Proctor, who's always talking about this guy. As a matter of fact, <laughs> as I read this book, I found that Bob Proctor refers to so much of what is in here. Uh, there are so many different laws that are in here, and I'm not sure exactly if I'll cover them all or not, but this one that we're going to deal with today had a recent profound effect on me in a way that uh, it just it just made sense. And since we're talking about prosperity and the way it lined out, I had to share it with you. So the law of compensation says, uh, whatever a man sows, that she, he that shall he also reap. Really, <laughs> really the law of, uh, of compensation here, um, the part that caught my attention anyways, I'm not going to go super deep into it. Uh, the part that really got me in here was um, talking about this part. If you want prosperity and success, but do not strive to change in any way, how can you expect things to be any different? A drunkard never becomes reformed until he decides to stop drinking. If some habit possesses or obsesses you, you are not the master of your life until you decide to change the habit. Uh, side note there, I I drank quite a bit uh, for a while and I did change the habit. And so this this speaks to me, right? Because I understand exactly what is happening here. If you have been brought into the world amidst lack and limitation, you can never get above it until you change your ideas about it. That is exactly what we're doing here with the prosperity practice. I'd already started, and so we know, just so we're clear, I'd already started and created the prosperity practice with all this in mind. What's really awesome is to see that this is being reinforced by a book written quite some time ago. I think it was actually written in the 80s. There are many, many people who live and die and never know anything different from what has been handed down to them. Once you change your vision, you will change conditions. Only when we cease to recognize a condition do we cease to attract it. The only way we can cease to recognize things is to change our minds about them. Yes. So, um... What we have in here is, and I'm going to refer to The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, where he says, you don't, there is no such thing as poverty. There is no such thing as lack. And all we can see is richness. Once we, and, and to make a decision to only see these things, then that's all that we see. This is very similar to in sales or marketing, all, all that you see is, as a salesperson, an opportunity. There's always an opportunity. So you've changed your vision and you're only looking for opportunity. I've recently been studying or reading up quite a bit on marketing. The only thing, that what I'm finding out that's so great about these positions is in sales and marketing and coaching and so many different spaces, the key element to success in these areas is to find the greatness in a product that's marketing. Um, uh, in sales, you know, you're trying to sell the best benefits, the great things that, that are going to benefit you. And same thing with coaching. I'm going to find... As a coach, I'm looking for what is the best thing in you that I'm trying to draw out or what is it your ideal life? What does that look like and how do we draw that out? And that's the vision. Cuz right now you're in a you know, most of us, most people are in the habit of living day to day to day to day and they feel like these results that they've been getting are just, you know, part of part of their daily lives. But if you take a moment and you look at it, you're going to see you can change how that day looks to you just by by making a decision to make a change <laughs> and 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 what i mean by that is um you know your your day is however you want it to look 
You can go through today and you can write it out one way. You can say this has been a crappy day full of X, Y, Z. Or you can bend this. You you can look look at this day, and you can say, you know, just because this happened, that afforded this next opportunity, that afforded this next great thing that happens in my life to happen. So today could be the most magnificent day if you choose to look at it that way. No matter what has happened. Hope some of that makes sense, Willie. I'm reading out of the book a little bit here. Have you visited several homes and found them all different in some respect? They were neat, tidy, clean, orderly, bright, cheery, or dull, gloomy, disorderly, dusty, uninviting. The home is a reflection of the ruling mind. Its appearance speaks its keeper's mind. If you're working for success, look at the home. If order is the first law, then it must also be your first application. No lack of money is no excuse for a disorderly home. It can be neat and clean even if you are using store boxes for furniture. If you wish a better home, a finer environment, nicer furnishings, you must alter your mind right where you are to receive better things. It is the little things that count, and many little things make a big thing. It is useless to pray for a new home if you cannot take care of your present one. This was it, man. I was like, I was blown away. I, I, I was, I was just like, you know what? <laughs> it finally makes sense. It finally just clicked on me that, you know what? I've been letting some things go for way too long. I don't live in the most disorderly place, but it wasn't the most orderly place. Were things looking the way that I wanted to or not? And, and they weren't, they were they weren't bad, but they weren't orderly. They weren't ah as nice as they could be. And the line, no lack of money is no excuse for a disorderly home. It can be neat and clean, even if you're using store boxes for furniture. He's right. Raymond Hollywell is absolutely 100% correct in this, and there, there was no need. So over the past few weeks, I've really laid this out. I, and, and actually, to be honest with you, uh, I took a little bit out of the book do, 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 Atomic Habits where I'd been really just s- staying on top of uh, a few different things and been cleaner. And my kids noticed. Finn actually came into my uh, bathroom. He goes, Dad, you've got the nicest bathroom in the house. I said, I was proud of that moment because I had been keeping on top of it and I had worked to make it so. And that t- that carried over into the bedroom. That carried over into the kitchen where, you know, every morning now, it takes five minutes to clean up. It takes five minutes to, you know, five to ten minutes to do something just a little bit each day. And I am reaping such a reward. I'm re- I, I, you know, I know this isn't, we're not d- diving too deep into the law of compensation, but we are digging into the aspect of whatsoever a man sows that shall he also reap. And you know, by, by ordering my thoughts, by ordering what's Im- right immediately around me, I can do this. I can do this, and it feels it feels phenomenal. So I gotta ask you, you know, if you want prosperity and success, but do not strive to change in any way, how can you expect things to be any different? You can't. You can't keep doing the same things and expect different results, people. That's not how this works. At any rate, <laughs> this is something I had to share with you. If you'd like to chime in, if you'd like to reach out to me, get to me at brandon at prosperity-practice.com. Let me know that you heard about the law of compensation and you heard about Raymond Hollywell's working with the law, law of compensation. Thank you.